So in this video, I will show you how to work with GIS data inside Blender with the use of the Blender GIS add-on and make landscape visualizations like this one. So the first thing you have to do is to download and install the Blender GIS add-on. So go to Google and Google Blender GIS and this will bring you to the GitHub page where you can download the GIS plugin. Go to code, download zip and save. Next, start a blender. Now you just have to activate this add-on. Go to edit preferences and in preference go to add-ons and in add-ons uh, go to install then search the location where you've downloaded the Blender GIS add-on. It is probably called Blender GIS master.zip uh, and then hit install add-on. I won't do that because I have it already installed on my computer. So then we still have to activate it by searching for it in the search bar here I search Blender and Blender GIS sh shows up on top. I activate it by ticking this square in front of it. Then there's only one important thing that, that we have to set up and that's the cache folder that's where it stores its temporary files. So select the folder and create a new folder if you like or use any other folder that's on your hard drive already. So I have one called Blender Cache already. I select it and accept. Now you are set to go. So the Blender GIS add-on added menu items on different parts of the Blender interface, but the most important one is on the top left side of the screen. Here you see the GIS menu with uh, the preferences that will bring you back to the preferences that we just discussed uh, and otherwise import export and uh, other functionality uh, of the blender GS add-on that we will discuss in the course of this video another location in the blender interface where it added some uh, a small menu item is on the right side in this menu if it doesn't show with you you have to click on this little arrow here go to the view tab and then you see at the bottom the geo scene tab and there uh, you can set uh, georeferencing of the scene. So here you s set the core, basically the coordinate system in which you will be working. Um, so in this case, I have it set to Web Mercator. There default, there's an, uh, two options, the WGS84 and the Web Mercator, very widely used global coordinate systems and but you have access to the complete database of coordinate systems so if you go to click on the plus and then add search um, uh, you can enter here the epsg code uh, which stands which is the identifying code of all coordinate of uh, coordinate systems but you can also simply if you don't remember the code hit a keyword like Amersfoort which will bring you the Dutch uh, national grid. So you can also work in that coordinate system. However, we will be working with uh, map layers that are found online that are accessible through the, with the Blender GIS add-on, and these are all in Web Mercator. So we have to select these. Uh, also, when you add new layers, you get the option to select and set the scene georeferencing. Note that it is with the default settings, with the standard add-on that you're working with, it is not possible to work with layers that are in different coordinate systems. In order to get this functionality, you have to add uh, or to install an extension to the GIS add-on, uh, but it is not necessary to follow this video because we will be working only with Web Mercator. So how do you get 
GIS data display in Blender? Well, that's very easy. Well, we start with selecting the default cube, hit X and delete it. We also close this tab to give us more space to view the maps in the viewport. Uh, then you go to GIS and then we start by importing base map data. Click on it and then you have this option to select uh, base maps from different sources, so from Google, from OpenStreetMaps, from Bing, from S3, which will give you uh, various maps that are also available in uh, ArcGIS, for instance, and uh, OpenStreet and another OpenStreetMaps. So uh, I will just show you with uh, Google Satellite and you have the uh, option of Satellite and Map and otherwise everything else is set as required so you hit ok and it will automatically project you in top orthographic view the way we look at maps so initially it's 2d uh, display and you're kind of fixed in this display and you can also see that your mouse now uh, that the location of your mouse now uh, corresponds to a coordinate that is displayed in the top left part of the screen. So the reason that we are not seeing any map displayed is because the blender grid is in the way. We are now zoomed out so far that the blender grid is very fine uh, and is actually obstructing our view. So we have to make sure that the blender grid does not display. Go to viewport overlays at the top right of the screen and then uh, deselect grid and you will directly see an image of the earth if everything went right. Uh, but we're not in GOS view anymore now. If you zoom in, you don't get any, uh, you don't uh, get any higher resolution image. So I have to activate it again. Web to data base map, add a base map. And now we're able to zoom in on any location of the earth. You can zoom in by uh, scrolling the scroll wheel, rolling the scroll wheel, or uh, by hitting B on the keyboard, and you will get the crosshairs, and then you can select an area, and that's an area where you can zoom into uh, by pressing the middle mouse button. You can drag the view. Uh, you can also search locations on the earth, so. We can, uh, and you do that by hitting G, it will give you the this search bar. You can search any location Earth that it recognizes, so for instance Paris, and it will automatically zoom into Paris. To switch to another base map layer, you can hit spacebar, and then you can uh, select any of the other options. So, for instance, Esri, Shaded Relief, alright, takes a while to download sometimes, the Esri servers are a little bit slower than the Google ones, as you can see it loads the Esri Shaded Relief of Northern France. If you want, you can pause the video now and explore what the other map layers have to offer you. Note that sometimes when you're switching between two different map layers that you suddenly see nothing at all. That either means that you haven't downloaded the map tiles yet or that there are no uh, tiles available for that specific resolution. In that case you should zoom out a little bit. When you've done enough exploring you can zoom into any kind of interesting topography. In my case we're moving from northern France to central Italy, to the small town of Norma. While you're looking for a location that you like, I'd recommend to turn on Google Maps again because these tiles load faster than the S3 ones. So zoom in into your location, I hit B. And I position my view until the view covers an area that I like. So when you're satisfied, 
you can export the current view by hitting E on the keyboard. That will create a flat plane, uh, a flat georeference plane of the view you just had from the on the map. Uh, if you don't see anything and instead see just a gray plane, it means that uh, you're in the wrong shading mode. So you can either switch to a different shading mode by hitting this sphere here or still in this shading mode you can turn on textures however you will probably notice that when you zoom in the resolution on the image is rather poor this is because you were quite far away when you took the snapshot so you get only the lower resolution tiles that belong to that level of zooming when you went, want to uh, keep the level of zooming while at the same time getting a higher resolution image you have to do the following for now delete uh, the map that we just made go back into GIS view hit base map Google satellite so we keep the same area but we still want to zoom in on the resolution in order to do this we have to hit L and that locks the current view of the camera to this area so you can see on the top left that it is now locked However, we can still zoom onto the resolution of the image. So when I scroll the scroll wheel now, you can see that it will increase the zoom level. Zoom 15, zoom 16, but you can see for zoom uh, level 17, it has to download 650 tiles, so that may take a while. So I went back to zoom level 16 because at level 17 it wasn't able to produce an exported map. Um, sometimes you have this because there's too many map uh, tiles that have to be loaded and combined into a single map apparently the add-on cannot work with that so um, there's also a way to check whether you are happy with your resolution uh, without zooming in further on the on the zoom level so in this case you have to press control and then the mouse wheel in order to uh, zoom in as you see it doesn't load new uh, a new zoom level and associated tiles you just zoom in on what you have now and then you can see uh, in more detail the resolution that you have currently so I'm alright with this and uh, when you are as well then you hit E and then it exports the map and you can see here also in the outliner that there is an object called export google set wm so to get this into a 3d representation of the landscape we have to add some elevation data luckily the blender gis add-on provides for this as well so with the plane with the projection of google maps selected go to gis go to web geodata and get srtm and this will load the nasa satellite elevation global satellite data onto this map and then boom it uh, transformed the flat plane into a 3d representation of the landscape using the global elevation data you can also turn off the texture see how it looks like it isn't the highest resolution, but it's okay for our purposes for now. So what else can we do? Well, let's first turn the textures on again. So we can also, uh, we have also access to OpenStreetMap data through the Blender GIS add-on, and that allows you to plot other topographic features like houses, roads, etc. onto your elevation map. So to see how this works, uh, go to GIS, Go to Web Geodata again and then get OSM, OpenStreetMap. Uh, so I have with the Ways tab selected, you choose Building and then we choose Elevation from Object and then we select as Object where it gets its elevation from the Google exported map with the elevation data on it. So this one. Uh, we want our buildings to be extruded, so 3D. 
uh, the default height is a little bit high for this kind of rural habitation that you see here so I put in a default height of 6 meters and then a random height threshold of 4 which allows you to randomize uh, the height a little bit and at a standard level height so uh, of each floor uh, of 3 meters as if this data is available and then we hit OK this will take a while again because it grabs the data from this online resource and has to project it on your map again so when it's finished you see that it has added small blocks of housing to your map so the Blender GIS add-on also allows you to visualize some other properties of the landscape uh, other properties that are common to visualize in a GIS system as well such as height, slope and aspect to access this functionality you have to select uh, the landscape because it will create new materials in order to visualize these different elements so go to GIS and then to nodes and do terrain analysis and you will see that it has replaced the material of the terrain uh, for a new one so you can see this at material properties on the right side the rust mat one was the old material that was applied to this terrain which was the Google satellite imagery uh, that's not lost we can still use it if we want to but uh, at the current moment it has applied the height uh, information on the on the terrain so this uh, the green represents a low terrain and the red represents a high uh, elevation and besides a height material it also created two other materials one for aspect which uh, is the orientation of the terrain south north west and east and one for slope or the steepness of the terrain in which red in this case is a steeper slope than the green it is very easy to change the color scheme of these different uh, visualizations of landscape properties so we're going back to height and then we're going to material properties below the surface section you find a color input which is called the co uh, color ramp and we have to open it by clicking the arrow and then you see the color ramp that is being used to visualize the elevation data in this case you can move these parts of the color ramp to change the location of the color uh, you can also change the color itself by clicking on one of these things and then basically change the color in the color wheel you can of course also add other stops in this color ramp by hitting the plus adds one in the middle and another one and another one and these can also all be colored in the way you desire and since these color stops on the color ramp uh, represent basically elevations they act a little bit like ISO lines so when you start to move one it is like you are visualizing a moving ISO line which is a very effective way of visualizing the change in landscape elevation in this case In a later video I will explain how to make an animation out of this and export this as a video. So to finalize the workflow and complete the cycle back to GIS software, we are gonna make a geo-render of this image that can be imported back in software like QGIS. So to do this, select the object that you want to make a geo-rendered auto graphic image of so then you click GIS camera and H 
hit geo render this rectangle that's uh, created here is basically an orthographic camera that is positioned exactly above uh, the terrain looking down on it to go into camera position you hit the zero on the numpad or you hit this button here toggle the camera view this will bring you in top-down view ba uh, basically the view from the camera down on the landscape and in order to export it you have to make a render or a snapshot basically of what you're seeing here you can find uh, the render settings at the right side here so here you set the resolution of the image that you want so I'm right with this resolution that was already automatically set by the Blender GIS add-on uh, the next thing you do is go to view and viewport render image a new window appears with the render as created and then we do image and save as to save the image however the image is not automatically the georeference information is not automatically included in the image but a separate file is created which includes this georeference information open a new window on the side by okay, hitting the corner and then dragging it and change this into the text editor and in the text editor of blender hit this little button and you will see that there is a file georefcam.wld and that's a so-called world file which includes the georeference information for the map so we have to save this file as well in the same folder as the render and with exactly the same name so uh, save as so this is called render2.wld because we named our image render2.png save so with a rendered image and the world file saved on your hard drive in the same folder we can open a uh, GIS program like QGIS and simply load the render into the layers and you see that it projects on the right location as long as you ensure that the projection and coordinate system in QGIS is the same as you used in Blender You may be wondering now why we went through this entire laborious process of visualizing data in 3D and then exporting it back to a 2D format. Well, for one thing, sometimes that is necessary because we want to see our data in relation to uh, data that we only have in GIS. Uh, another reason is that we can do some things better in Blender than in GIS. It is of course possible to export this model as a 3D model, which I won't discuss in this video, but I will show you how to make a render of this view. Basically a render is a 2D picture of your 3D image. So to make a render, you go to view and then viewport render image. This is the most straightforward way to make a render. One last thing before we wrap up this video, you may have wished to place the height material again with the uh, Google Maps imagery and try to click on this one uh, that doesn't work and in fact this is now the material that is applied to the terrain and this material in this specific slot should be replaced by the rust mat one so if you want to get the imagery back select the slot in which the material is there that is used on the terrain and then search for the rest mat terrain and then you can remove this one
In the next video we will pay more attention to lighting setup, rendering and camera and material settings as well as working with your own custom data. So I hope to see you in the next video.